Hello and welcome. We're getting ready to start our overview for lessons 13 to 16 in level A. So how did last week go? Some of you may feel that your children need more work with subitizing and that's fine because guess what? That's what we're going to be working on this week, the whole week, just practicing our subitizing. We're going to mix in some geometry. And what that does is it's allowing your child's brain to kind of just absorb in the things that they're learning. So we're not going to be learning new things as far as subitizing. It's just going to be basically review. So let's get started on what materials you're going to need for this week. The materials you're going to need this week is your abacus, your tally sticks, tiles, the geo board, your math card game book, and then a variety of the appendix pages. You'll need your strips for sorting, which is appendix page three. If you don't have those, you've lost them, you've misplaced them. Remember, in the back of your teacher's manual, you can print some more out. You'll need the finger cards cut out. You'll need the patterning with rectangles. Those rectangles are going to need to be cut out. And you need your tally stick patterns, which is appendix page three. You'll need the worksheets. We're going to do worksheet one this week. You're going to need two pencils, preferably not of the same length. You'll also need two flat books as well as some glue. These are the items that are bolded in your materials. The glue I have here is a glue stick. I just think it's easier to use with a kindergartner. Let's get started with lesson 13. Look at your materials. The first thing it asks for is the music for writing the numbers. This is in appendix four, which is only found in the back of your teacher's manual. Again, this is just like the yellow is the sun. It's just the music if you want to play it on an instrument. If you want to listen to the music, remember you can go to our website, go to curriculum, then you'll see a thing for songs, go there, and then you can listen to this song being sung and you can sing along with it. But know that they're not getting ready to write these numbers yet. They're just learning. They're going to learn which numbers start on the left, which numbers will start on the right. The song just makes it a fun way of learning. So look at the bottom where it says quantity 10. I want to read something to you first before we go over this. In the beginning of the teacher's manual, there are some general thoughts on teaching mathematics. That was something I had recommended that you read earlier when we were going through the introduction week. I would like to read number 13 to you. It says the role of the teacher is to encourage thinking by asking questions, not giving answers. Once you give an answer, thinking usually stops. I want to encourage you, give your child time to think. So back on lesson 13, quantity 10, one of the questions it asks is ask if she thinks she could build 10 with tally sticks. Some of your children, yeah, no big deal. They can go build it. Some of you may have children who have to really think about this. Let them think. And if they're still struggling, guide them through. Don't give them the answer. So one of the things you could talk about is, well, what's so special about 10? Ten? 10's all your fingers. All right. So we know what five is. So you could guide them by asking, do you know how to build five with your telly sticks? And so let them build five. Well, how many fives are in 10? If 10 is all your fingers. So you see, I'm not telling them what to do. I'm asking them. I'm helping them to think through. That's the best thing we can do is help our children think. Make sure when they're entering 10 on the abacus, they do it as one unit, the whole row. Oh, my geese are kind of messed up. Sorry. It's important that they're able to understand it's all the beads on one row. I think for most children, that'll be pretty simple. If not, remember, if they don't, you know, maybe they want to count or they do five and five. Just ask them, okay, on the next row, let's enter 10. Maybe they do. Awesome. If not, just keep doing it until they're able to. That goes true with any of the other numbers that you're asking. This is the week. If they have numbers that they're struggling with subitizing, focus on those numbers. 
If there's numbers they get really easy, great. Let's focus on the ones that they struggle with. And if they're not struggling with them, then just give them some random numbers, let them enter it on the abacus, you're done. For making quadrilaterals, they're gonna use their geo board. Give them some rubber bands and then just follow what it says. Notice the explanation for the teacher on the side. It's letting you know what a quadrilateral is. Quad means four, lateral means sides. So you're building something that has four sides. Just remember, four sides does not always mean it's a square or a rectangle. Notice the pictures in your book. There could be other ways that you can make shapes with four sides. The game for today is tally sticks in order. So you're going to use your cards, your tally stick cards, and they're going to put them in order. Maybe you have a child who's really active or this comes pretty easy. Fine, let them put them in order and then have them also build the numbers with tally sticks. Lesson 14 is the AL Abacus Stairs. They're going to build stairs on the abacus. They're also going to learn some new terms. Remember, the warm up section is review. Depending on your child, some may need more review than others. There's a section in here when you're doing the numbers, if you have a child to be more physical, they can jump, they can hop, again, they can run to a place and back. You know your child. You know what they think is fun. Incorporate that in these warm ups. So there's this abacus song that they want you to sing and it's sung to the tune of Hokey Pokey. So I'm gonna attempt to just do the first one for you so you get an idea of how it's done. This song is something that you can sing and then your child will do the actions. So pardon me, cause I'll be looking down and looking up and trying to do the abacus all at the same time. Cause I do not have the song memorized. So it's like, let, let's just read it through and then I'll sing it. The one steps in, the one steps out. He holds up the number and he waves it all about. He clears the number and sits back down. Where is number two? Notice in the song, it says to sit back down. So at the beginning, as they're doing this, you want them to stand up. So here we go. The two steps in, the two steps out. He holds up the number and he waves it all about. He clears the number and he sits back down. Where is the number three? And it's okay if you want to hold up the three. Give your child the visual to see the quantity and then they'll do the three. You may not need to hold your fingers up. Totally up to you. Just seemed really natural to me. So one of the activities is to build the stairs on the abacus. You are pretty much going to lead your child to building these stairs by asking them to enter one on the first line. Let's enter two on the second line. Let's enter three on the third line. In the explanations, it does give some help if you have a child who struggles with this. So make sure you read that because you never know, it could be your child. And then the game is finger cards in order. And remember, you can play the game it's during your lesson or maybe you save the game for later on in the day, or depending on how your day's going, you could save it for your fifth day. Lesson 15 is the AL abacus stairs and perpendicular. So those are the two things you're gonna be focusing on. Notice in the materials, this is where you're gonna need your pencils and the two flat books. I have something like this for my two flat books. And then pencils, I'm using colored pencils because all my regular pencils were the same length. And it's asking for you to get pencils that are of differing lengths. So this way, these, put it over here. So these two are different lengths. So just notice that most of what's in this lesson is review. Things that your child has been working on in the last few lessons. It's just giving them a chance to really get it solid, to be able to do it with ease, hopefully to a point where they don't even really have to think about it. And then you'll be introducing the term perpendicular. That's where the pencils and the books come in handy. And you can see the pictures on that page of how you're supposed to show this to your children. Look at the in conclusion at the bottom of the page. 
sometimes these inconclusions are things I like to look at and then during the day, at other times of the day when we are not doing math, these are some things that I would like to do with my child or my children. Here it's saying, ask the child to find perpendicular lines and planes in the room or in nature. Later on in the day, if you're in another room, you can say, hey, do you see anything in here that's perpendicular? Or you go outside, you can ask those questions also. This way, it helps them to see math more integrated in other things and not some isolated subject that they're doing. Our last lesson for the week, lesson 16, that comes after game and then rectangles and squares. Let's look at the comes after game. This is a really important concept for children to be able to tell you which number comes after a number, but not in order. So you could start with two and you ask what comes after two. Let them use their fingers. We have three. What comes after six? They can hold their fingers up and add another number. Oh, it's seven. So this game is an important concept. Spend some time on it, but know that it's going to be something you'll be doing throughout the year also. So they don't have to have it all mastered on this very first day. They'll have more time to practice. When they identify rectangles, it's important that they also understand that a rectangle is a four-sided figure, which is also a quadrilateral. This is the lesson where you're gonna be using Appendix 5, which is the rectangles. Make sure you have them all cut out before the lesson and then give your child time to explore making patterns using these rectangle shapes. When you get to the section about squares, don't tell your child which one is a square. Let them have time to look at these and figure it out. If they don't get it right away, you can ask questions like, how do they look alike? How do they look different? Is there one that's different than all the others? and let them tell you what they are observing. If after all the observing, they still aren't noticing that one is a square, you can ask, well, is there one that has all the sides the same? Let them then look and figure it out. And if they see it, say yes, then you can talk to them about that being a square. And you might wanna reinforce with them, it's a square, it's also a rectangle and it's a four-sided figure, which makes it a quadrilateral. Before we leave, I wanna show you, I went out and I got the tabs for my game book. Notice I put the names, I put N to remind me it's number sense. I have, see the P for multiplication, all the rest pretty much are in order. I also added back here percents, F, because it's in the fraction section. So there are a few games in here that are for percents. Not that you're gonna need that right now in level A. Just letting you know that's how I, how, how I, just letting you know that's how I labeled it. I also put a tab here because these are the games that will be played this week. And remember, you have a fifth day. If you need to, if, if time is tight and you can't get the games played during the, the day of the lesson, you have that fifth day where you can then play those games. Do what works best for your family. We did it, another week under our belt. I'm excited for you guys. It's gonna be a fun week. Get to practice more subitizing, getting to learn some new terms, using the geo board. Have fun. And I'll see you next week as we go over lessons 17 through 21. Until then.